Hello, everyone. My name is John DePietro. And I'm Bob Zagami with the Camper Report Show. And on this Camper Report Show, we are going to look into the growing number of single female RVers. And today we're going to go in-depth with Charlie Grace. You're going to love this interview. Fantastic. Sounds very interesting. Uh, I'm going to interview with Kurt Hemmler from the RV Technical Institute, and they've released some new uh, training programs for level three certification with many of the manufacturers. So I'm going to give an update on where they are with the uh, technical certifications of technician training for the RV industry. Great. Those stories that we got from, where do we get those stories, Bob? Um, let's see. Rick Kessler at RV Business, Ben Quiggle at the Woodhouse Campground Magazine. Can't do it without them. Can't do it without them. We'll be back with those stories and much more right here on The Camper Report Show. Stay with us, everyone. Hey, everybody. It's John from The Camper Report Show. And I want to introduce you to RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. Now, Brooklyn Bedding will make a mattress to fit any size RV. The unit that we have in our Class C is a Brooklyn Dreamfold Hybrid. Well, we put it in a couple weeks ago. We've been on a couple trips. Sometimes I've slept in it when I've gone out alone. My wife has slept in it. And you know what? We both had great nights sleep. You know, they have their own factory right in Arizona, so that gives them strict quality control. It was easy and a fun to set up. You hear that? Wow less than 30 seconds so that is luxury now the thing I like best about this there is a 120 night sleep trial four months you can try this out and guess what it's got a 10 year warranty we've had it for two weeks here's the reason I like it it fits perfectly here where the old mattress was it was easy to buy you just go online and there's every choice imaginable, which says a lot because the RV biz has a million different sizes of mattresses. You should order it now. It's 25% off and give yourself, your family, and anybody else who you travel with the best gift possible, the gift of a great night's sleep. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Camper Report Show. This is the news segment. My name is John DePietro. Standing over there in the wide open spaces. Bob, where are you there in that in that picture behind you? I know I'm allegedly in Myrtle Beach. You're somewhere out in the West somewhere. No idea. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the story of our... But it, it's interesting I, because... I, I think it's a famous rock. It's a no famous rock. But right near you, could be a Love's travel center because the Love's RV network is getting bigger and bigger as we change the order of the stars around here. But um, our friends at Love's travel centers are opening these. They're not really campgrounds, but you may want to call them campgrounds. They got a lot of attractions. Well, they they're crossing the line. They they have developed thirty three what they call Love's travel stops which are just yep. hookups at their traditional Love's facilities. However, on top of that, they have already started to add 11 Love's RV stops, and those are pretty much campgrounds. They're for extended stays. They have full amenities. They have sports courts and fire pits and grills, uh, dog parks. And so they are, in some cases, across the street from an RV I mean, a Love's travel stop. So they've got both ends of it covered, and they're going to be increasing these things over the next few years. So it's a dramatic move. It's a very smart move for them, obviously, to get a lot of people stop in for gas. And there's been a, a cry in the industry for more than 10 years that people need clean, quiet, overnight accommodations where they don't necessarily need a full service campground. So the, the RVs, the Love's travel stops meet that. And then they recognize that, hey, we got all this other extra land. Let's, some people might want to stay more than one night because the benefit of that is you have a restaurant, you have shower facilities, you have gas, you have propane. You can do everything that you need overnight before you get on the road the next day. And yep. uh, Jim Wheeler, who is the director of hospitality, 
in RV operations, I'm going to be doing an in-depth interview with Jim for the program the week of November 13th. Perfect. So they're expanding and they're getting a lot of publicity and the campers on the road, they really like what they see. Super. And you know what? I have experienced the um, the smaller stop, not the full campground, as you just mentioned. But we were coming back from Elkhart. Um, and there's one just outside of Cleveland where it had, I think it had 10 hookups. And they're not free, um, but they have um, power and sanitation and water. So um, you know what? The fact is, loves are already noted for their clean bathrooms. And many of these areas that they buy in have ex wide expanses of land. So why let a competitor pull in there when you can put a campground in and, um, you know, still make your money on gas and food? So great the, marketing move. Two, two real big pluses for it. Number one, they're almost always right off the exit. The right. sign's big. Right. You take right. off the exit, yep. you're in their facility. But also, as far as the campgrounds and the travel stops, they're totally automated and contactless experience. So everything is automated. You just go in, put your card in, take care of it, and don't even have to see anybody and go right to the facility. So we're going to we're gonna stay on top of that and watch that as they grow that part of their business. Right. So also, as far as camping is concerned, in a non-campground environment, our friends at Thor have just signed an agreement with Speedway Motorsports. Now, Speedway Motorsports, it's not NASCAR. Speedway Motorsports is the company that owns many of the major tracks like Bristol and Dover and Talladega in New Hampshire, and I believe Daytona as well, to be the official RV partner of Speedway Motorsports. Really interesting. And the person from Speedway Motorsports that is the... Um, interface with, with Thor, our friend, uh, Mr. Zimmerman. His name is Kevin Camper. Now, what could be more appropriate <laughs> to um, have a relationship with an RV manufacturer than a gentleman named Camper? But this is going to really allow Thor to showcase their products at these tracks, which we've been talking about for ages. Yeah, I think I think it's a win-win for everybody, but it's tremendous for the RV industry with somebody the power. You know, when you have the world's largest RV manufacturer jumping into an investment like this, and it is an investment. It's going to cover 15 Speedway uh, events uh, during the season. Uh, you know, and Thor's got they have, they have 20 manufacturers with 200 North American brands, and as you said, Matt Zimmerman, I assume, is the men a good friend who put put this deal together. Um, and Thor was rated by Newsweek as America's most trusted company in 2022 and 23, one of America's most responsible companies. So they get high visibility. There's going to be yep. 20, 25,000 camping spaces. Um, and as you said, the, the tracks that they have draw incredible crowds and every NASCAR race draws a lot of campers. So the exposure for Thor at places like you mentioned, Atlanta, Bristol, Charlotte, Circuit of the Americas, Dover, Las Vegas, Nashville, New Hampshire, North Wilkesboro, and Sonoma Raceway, and Texas Motor Speedway. So some of the best races yeah. for NASCAR in the country. Let's look into this partnership in a little bit more depth because the RV industry is finally realizing that marketing with NASCAR is a good idea. You've got Camping World that has been involved for several years. They even had the uh, Camping World truck series for yep. several years sponsorship and at the same time our friends at campers in have partnered with a race team to put a car in several nascar races throughout the year um usually number 16 um for the cup series and um this the additional series but now you've got retailers as well as manufacturers that are seeing the benefits of partnering with NASCAR. And I think what you'll see, Thor, will carry that down one level to the dealers. And when yep. they're in those areas on those tracks, I'm sure they're going to have activities with the dealers and have probably product displays where they could sell units to those campers. Yep. Because and then our go, friends. The campers are going to arrive in an RV. So I'm sure our friends at Keystone will want to, our friends at Keystone will want to call us to say, Zagami and DePietro, we need you to um, host 
the cocktail hour prior to the show. So we'll, uh, we'll have to suggest we'll have that to, to, uh, to do that. To and say, yeah. Yeah. So there's that. And, and Christy Spencer. So Christy Spencer, if you're watching this week's show, John and I are available. Yeah, we wear uh, extra large. So right. anyway, speaking of Keystone, um, the Fusion and Lippert um, are getting together again with the Flipping Nomad. Now, Flipping Nomad, that's kind of a crazy name. It's a young lady that um, is really a designer that takes these base units and glamorizes them. I've been into the one at the Hershey show a couple of years ago, you'd never know it was a stock unit. So they're going to be bringing that to Tampa, Florida. And I guess you'll get to see that. Well, they're going to, they, they get a completely new and renovated uh, fusion. Yep. That primarily has showcasing Lippert innovation and technology. So <clears throat> along with Courtney Armstrong from the public, no, who in, in her regular job does indeed flip, RVs for people and get puts her style and her touch to it. But the unit is not going to be in the Keystone display. It's going to be in the Lippert display because it's a showcase of Lippert technology with Courtney's design features on the product itself. And I suspect that we won't have any trouble finding that display because there will be a long line. It's a beautiful looking yeah. fifth wheel. It's a toy hauler that's been renovated. Uh, and then Renovated is probably the understatement word of yeah. the year. And it's probably wrong because it's really built from the ground up. So yep. it, was, it was designed yep. as, as a Pretty one-off cool. to show Lippert technology. And, and of course, Lippert is on most products, most trailers and motorhomes. But it's not just a bunch of products that they're pushing out. They've got incredible resources on research and development and innovation, something like they're introducing ABS brakes for travel trailers. That'll be on display yeah. in Tampa. So yeah. they are putting a lot of money into new features on the RVs as we start to bounce out of the uh, recession and look for a pretty strong 2024 for the RVs. Exactly. So three great stories, all sourced from RV business and Woodalls. And, um, you know, whether it's racing, whether it's um, innovating design or stopping along the way, you will learn about it all right here. Where, Mr. Zagami? On the Camper Report Show. Stay with us, everyone. Everybody, welcome back to the Camp Report Show. And our guest today is a good friend, Kurt Hemmler. Uh, let's see, what is your title? You're president of RBTI and a vice senior vice president at RVIA. Yeah, of, yep, of RVIA and specifically standards. So I oversee both the standards and the education piece of RVIA. You've got a, you've got a lot on your plate, Mr. Hemmler. <laughs> but I, I understand there's some new things coming along. Uh, <laughs> relative to our certification programs on the RV technicians, which has been amazing since you've come on board four years ago. And we've got career paths and we got people actually really interested in the industry. And I think the big thing from all of these programs is the respectability of the career path that people have. Uh, and why don't, you, why don't you tell us what's coming in terms of level three, but maybe before you do that, give a quick recap of some of the success of what you've had in the program. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, first and foremost, I got to give credit to, to all those that have been down this journey with me, including yourself, Bob, um, you know, from our, our first day at RVX when we, we stood and talked to each other. It is amazing. We're four years down the road. But yeah, I'm happy to report that the team and uh, we have professionalized and created, we've, we've pretty much met every um, original pro forma ask uh, that was put out uh, as a as a, a building block from you know day one, uh, where we sit today is that you know we will have by the end of this year over fifteen thousand individuals that have 
uh, logged in or began the journey in, in our curriculum at some point somewhere in the career path. Um, level one, level two is, is fully up and running. And level three, we launched in July. Uh, and level three is going to be a topic of discussion with uh, at RVDA. That's our workshop will be wrapped around our around level three and, and really getting the industry uh, to understand what level three is. Um, because level three is where RVTI does not necessarily do the training directly like it does in level one or level two. Level three is the vendors or suppliers who will provide curriculum and content uh, to a uh, committee of master techs that will then review that for content, technical um, content, and then give it an approval, which then allows technicians to go in and sign up for those individual classes, whether it be online, in person, or what have you. Um, so that's that's level three. It's the five specialty areas, um, which is part of the career path. So once you have one and two done, you want to then complete those five specialty areas, which have about 23 hours of, of, con of credits in them that you need to get. And then once you complete that, you will be awarded uh, simultaneously level three, but also master tech at that point. Um, it's, so a, it's a big step, a uh, big step for it, the, the technicians. And it is. It, it's solid in terms of the content itself. Uh, you mentioned RBDA, which of course is the RB Dealers Association that Correct. most of us will be at next week in las vegas and uh how how is that presented are you having some workshops or uh... well, yeah, we're going to have some workshops there we actually have a booth there uh with phil gracia the president of that has always graciously our you know our our working relationship between the rv industry association and the rv dealer association is, is really seamless i mean they they get as much credit to the success of rvti as as does rvia and go rving which really has allowed us the the initial funding uh to to get this project up and running and um, um, so we'll, we'll be there proudly presenting at the convention. Um, we will also be getting to hand out uh, the career path uh, posters, if you may. You know, it, we would like to begin to see these popping up all across the country in different dealerships and, and places. And and we we want we want to, you know want the consume, consumer to know too that you know this is this is out there, and they should be looking and asking about um, you know does this does my dealership employ or have an RVTI certified technician. Um, well, you because... know, it, it, it's easy enough to do too, because all of us have purchased automobiles and you can't go mm -hmm. into a service department in an auto dealership without seeing a wall plastered with certifications. And it's a comfortable feeling that, hey, these people really know what you have. Mm -hmm. And and now we, we have that in terms of the RV industry. And of course, one of the pluses in bringing you on four years ago was you were not an RV person, you're an educator. So you didn't come into it with any preconceived notions. You didn't have any bad habits of the RV industry. You didn't owe anybody any favors. You just came in and said, they said, this is what we want to do. And you were able, yes, with the help of the board of directors with RBIA, RBDA, create this incredible program that, that, like I said, brings it to a level of respectability where people want to work in the industry, not only just work, but have a tremendous career path that will put them in a very lofty position financially, but also uh, from a satisfaction standpoint. The, yes. the ability and what that transfers down, which all of us want, is a happier customer mm -hmm. because of the service mm -hmm. transaction. And that's been that's been at the top of your list the whole time. And and you know, you've got the buy-in of the industry for doing that. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's it's personal to me as well, too, Bob, you know, being a, um, you know, coming up from a blue collar family, um, you know, being a military trained person um, and then also being educated by going and pursuing a, a degree in a traditional route. Um, so for me, it was personal, an opportunity to do that and to affect change within an industry that, you know, whether you're the consumer at the other end, enjoying and making memories or the people that I have come to be blessed with working with over these four years, um, you can't find more passionate and, and dedicated people. And I credit the entire industry for, for hiring me and giving me the opportunity to build something for them. I, I, I try to let everybody know, yes, we have just, just almost 15,000 people doing this right now, but you know, I, I, I'm not happy until that's 150,000 people doing it because there's still a lot of room for growth, but we're, but we're, we're, you know, we're, 
we're pushing that peanut up the hill every day. And at the end of the day, the two people I always put out front is, is, you know, the technician themselves to make sure they have that, that life and professional sustainability career, but then also the consumer, because, you know, if they, if they are having, uh, if they're in one more day RVing versus one day sitting in a shop waiting for their RV, that's that many more memories. And as we all know, life is pretty precious. That many more memories and that less uh, complaints. You know, yes. one thing, because our, our audience for the Camper Report show is consumer facing. We have mm-hmm. you know, many, many consumers that are on here. They may not understand the scope of RBTI or the training programs themselves. So speak to each of the fact that you encompass dealership technicians, mobile technicians. We now see a wave of campground technicians and consumers themselves. So talk to those four points to show the depth of the program. Sure, sure. No, and I think it starts with, um, you know, when I took this position, there was obviously a, you know, let me go back to the fact, you know, we are a 501c3, first of all, you know, we are a nonprofit um, and we were set up with the mission of training, certifying and recruitment of folks into the industry for our, our mission of overall, just letting the consumer have a better experience. I mean, that's kind of our charter. Um, when you say that and, and knowing, because I do come from the career and vocational training space, as you mentioned in the education is, you know, I've built um, HVAC schools, nursing schools, um, you know, electrical schools, things of that nature. All the trades out there are, are trying and fighting for, for bodies, you know, finding folks to go into the trades, which is very, very much more popular today than it was a few years ago. But because of that, you know, the RV industry and the ability to create this professionalized program um, is, is, in my mind, you know, it, it's we're ahead of the game with things and and to give a, you know, an idea, there's, there's no rock unturned. I mean, we have, we're going to train any technician that's willing to do it. But but if you look at the overall picture, you know, not, it's going to be a little difficult. I can't open my door and have 10,000 people standing with their hands up saying, I want to be an RV technician. So, you know, as you eat this elephant, I believe you do it one bite at a time and you may do in different ways. So we have created, you know, we have put a price point on the training that actually gives the consumer uh, an opportunity to get, you know, the top training that this gold standard of the industry by, you know, going online and taking the class or actually coming to Elkhart or, you know, becoming employed at one of our learning partners. But that's just, that's for the consumers to to reach out and do uh, at a very low cost. Um, The second one is, is we have relationships with all of the major dealers uh, as well as the little dealer guys and and girls out there. those are called authorized learning partners where we actually give the curriculum to them and we work with their trainers to train. So that just, once again, scopes us out. You know, you, you may remember some of the things I was saying earlier in some of the, the first couple of years was the hub and spoke model. You know, that's, that's up and working. It's uh, you know, the hub right here in Elkhart with our school, uh, you know, training close to a thousand folks face to face every year, but the real actions happening out at, you know, these learning um, learning partners, which aren't just dealers. We also have, community colleges, we have, you know, a high school, we have um, a, a women's prison uh, that has been very productive uh, in the last three years. Uh, we also have um, oh, uh, a, a couple just tech schools. Um, and, you know, so we're going to continue to push this out because we never the expectation was for everybody to come to Elkhart, Indiana, though it, it can be a, it's a very lovely place. And I do encourage everyone to come. Uh, we got our first snow here. So happy Halloween to everybody. But uh, <laughs> but with that being said, um, you know, we're growing across the board at about 25 percent every year. And, and, and that's just going to I think that's it's just the beginning. Um, and, uh, you know, and though it, it you know, the the sale of RVs is a little soft right now. Service is not, you know, we've just spent the last two years produce and bought more people in the RVs than, you know, the last five years combined. That's a lot of units out there. And so um, we need to train the consumer. Uh, we need to train mobiles. We need to train dealers, techs. You know, there's we train all techs is what we do. And we train the consumer as well. So if we all, you know, educate everybody a little bit better, get certified so we know that they're doing it safely, um, we will. Uh, take a bite out of the, the delays in service that so many folks have had to deal with. 
Fantastic. It's been a good ride. So our guest today has been Kurt Hamler, president of RBTI and vice president of RBIA. Uh, any closing comments for the fans or maybe give them a picture of the next few years? What else is on your plate now? Yeah, no. Um, first and foremost, you know, I'm, I'm hoping everyone's getting out there and enjoying it. I'm hoping you will, you will all in some small part, um, you know, get a get an opportunity to to enjoy RVing a little bit more because we're doing, you know, the industry is backing and, and training folks so that we are, are better and more professionalized than we've ever been. And I guess the last thing would just be to, you know, uh, be sure to check out, you can check out our website at rvti.org uh, where we have a lot of information, the ability if you are interested in, in, you know, getting some more education, whether you want to make a career out of it or you just want to get better educated on your own RV, uh, that's the first place to start. But um, other than that, I just want to thank you for the opportunity. Well, you know, and one thing you mentioned about the certification and the dealerships, we do want the consumers to ask the dealers if they have certified techs. Yeah. And we want the dealers to promote the fact that they have certified techs. It's a big circle, and, and we all play in that, sa that same sandbox. But consumers can drive an awful lot of activity in any industry, and uh, hopefully we'll do it with ours, too. Yeah, I want to think that to that point, but that's a good point is, you know, and, and be sure that the consumer, you know, they want to be specific to ask, you know, do you have any RV technical institute or RVIA certified technicians? Uh, we are uh, some, we have rolled out some window clings to make it easier to identify. It's a kind of a gold or gold and yellow colors or are there black and gold. Um, and it'll say a certified tech uh, or that we employ certified techs uh, to look for that. And, and that's going to be, a big push that over the next few years, we start putting out more of that too. Fantastic. All right, Kurt, always a pleasure to catch up with you. Thanks for joining the Camper Report Show today. Thank you, Bob. Welcome back to the Camp Report Show. It's John DePietro. You know, one of the cool things about doing the Camp Report Show here on the RV Life Network is you get to meet interesting people from all walks of life. <laughs> have you walked through life yet, young lady? I have walked through life. I've okay. skipped, I've jumped, I've leaped. And hopped as well. And hopped as well. Okay, so we are talking with Charlie Grace, who I've known for... Oh, wow. 36 hours? At least, at least. Something like that. I mean, you posted something on the internet. Mm -hmm. And I said, I like her chutzpah. Chutzpah? What's the word? Energy level. That's I'm a the high word. energy person. That's the word. That's the way to do it. And um, I said to you, get back to me. And what did you do right away? I said, call me. Let's call go. Call me and let's go. So we uh, talked on the phone and then we bumped into each other mm -hmm. Monday. Probably. Whatever day it was. Yeah. I don't even know what day it is today. But... Um, <laughs> You have a very interesting background, but interestingly, int most interestingly, is you're a fellow RVer. I am. Tell us what you RV in, how long you've been RVing, and why you RV. Ooh, that's a good question. That's okay. three questions. Three questions. i got to remember all three. Okay. I am your typical Goldilocks story, okay? Remember how we said one was hard, one was too soft, one was just right? I'm on my third RV. So okay. this is an important part of my story. Okay. I so, thought Goldilocks was blonde. Well, I'm going with the redhead version. So oh, just, redhead. just roll with me. Okay. Just roll with me. Roll with me. So I started with a small Class C, which I thought was fantastic. Had no RV experience. Just dreamed of it. Watched a lot of YouTubes, things like that. Thought I knew what I wanted, but it wasn't exactly what I needed. So a year later, I go through another, another travel, and I go to an RV store, and I'm like, oh, this is perfect. This is exactly what I need. I got one that was too big. Another big Class C, about 30 feet. Really loved the floor plan. Hated the way it drove. You know, after a while, you're like, you know. You went from just, a B to a big C. I went to a small C to a big C. Uh, okay. I don't want to say a super C, but in my life, okay. it was like a super C. Yeah. And then I thought, mm, drove that for a year. And I thought, I met some ladies who had a van. I went in their van and thought. This is it. This is it. I am a B girl. I want to be the camper van queen. Like, this is it. This is where I want to be. So um, I ended up buying. I sold the, sold the C. 
got to be. I've had it for two years now, and I won't go back. It's perfect. You're going to stay with that style. I'll stay with the B. It's okay. easy to drive. Let's talk about this. It's quiet to drive. A lot of people who drive these really big rigs, it's really loud, noisy. My a lot B. of squeaks. Super quiet fantastic ride. I put 43,000 miles on it in two years. That is moving, girl. Yeah, I'm moving. That is moving. You travel solo, you have a dog, you have a cat, you have a bird. What's your deal? I have my forever best friend. Her name is Rosie Bell Dog, and she's pretty awesome. So it's Oh, that's right. You do have the dog, yeah. it, it, which I thought was like a uh, Irish setter, but it's one with short legs. She's a she's a super rescue mutt. She is a chocolate lab collie mix, but she has... Chocolate lab yeah, I know, it's weird. Okay. Um, but she has dwarfism, so leave it to the RV comedian to get the dwarf dog. Okay. Talk about that comedian thing, uh, because that's really part of your life. It is. So I've been writing comedy for a long time. I write for other people. And then when I started getting in the RV world, I'm like, you know, there's so much amazing stuff here. And comedy is really about telling the truth. So um, I've heard so many stories, whether it be at campgrounds, events, and whatever. And I just start writing them down. And next thing you know, I thought, you know what? I'm going to do a year of stand-up specifically for the RV community. And I'm going to call it my Stinky Slinky Comedy Tour. <laughs> because everybody knows what a Stinky Slinky is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, which we won't get into any no, more detail no, on that no. right now. No, it's, it's, so a, it's a stinky story. It's in process now, or you're done with it, or what's the I deal? I started this year actually at the Tampa RV Show at Matt's RV Review's um, big meetup in, at Margaritaville in January. And I'm going to be going through the end of this year doing it through other, other campgrounds and other meetups and events. And then next year I'll start a new tour. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But I'm not putting out all of my content until the end of the year so people come and see my show. They want to see the show. Yeah. Okay. So, um... As a female traveling alone, mm -hmm. fears of safety. Ooh. Yes, no, maybe. I'm a redhead. Sometimes. They should fear me. <laughs> fear the redhead. Fear the redhead. Everything you've heard is true. Yeah. No, um, it's a very, it's a, it's a valid concern. Um, I very much, I have a team of people that I talk to regarding safety and security. You know, everything from visibility, making sure that you're visible in your van, you can see things all around at night, you know, from uh, pepper spray to making sure you make good reservations and talk to security wherever you go, whether it be yeah. a, a harvest host, your boondocking or whatnot. So I do have quite a few things in my repertoire of safety. I'm not going to say them all, but if you want to go on my um, website, I think I've got a nice little safety page that can help others. Okay. What would you say to other women that are... Uh toying with it and, and they're they're alone for whatever reason you know what you're never alone first off we've got a whole community of other women who rv a lot of other women campers so don't be afraid get out there and start and if you have any questions contact us there's other groups and organizations that will help you help you too okay we want to thank you so much oh thank you, you want to do, why don't we do this you got any new material you can try out with us because oh, we have a, a 1.7 million person oh audience? Well, I, let's keep Not it. like putting you on the spot. <laughs> let's keep it clean, but let's just say that Halloween's around the corner. Yeah. And for those kids and people who are traveling with grandkids, just remember, you will not find any skeletons at a campground. Do you know why? Uh, okay, I'm supposed to say, why, Charlie? Well, because they don't have enough guts to go camping. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> hey, everybody. Charlie Grace adventures uh website charliegraceadventures.com uh youtube uh YouTube, instagram, instagram can... facebook tiktok come find me i would love to make friends have a great day everybody this is the camp report show i'm john DePietro. she's charlie